Hi, my name is Jessica Villa. I'm the secretary of the Math and Science Club, and today we're going to be surveying um, Noose River water dogs. So this is a Noose River water dog, and we've caught him this morning. Um, his body is really brown with black spots. He blends in well with leaves, Pro helps protect him. Um, his gills are reddish or purple in color, and uh, that's what helps him breathe in the water. If you see his tail, it's compressed. Um, that helps him swim in the water. And uh, all salamanders that are aquatic have a compressed tail. So the Math and Science Club is going to be helping the NC Wildlife Resources Commission um, survey water dogs. And they did a survey back in the 1960s um, to kind of find out where they occur and how they're um, doing in the wild. And today what we're going to be doing is going back to the same locations. Um, we have a site right down the road from Nash that we're going to um, try to find out and see if we have caught a water dog. So the way that you trap a, a water dog salamander is that you can either take a, a big net, it's called dip netting, and you want to dip it into the water where um, a lot of leaves occur. They like to live um, under the leaves or under logs. They're completely aquatic. So the other way that you can trap them is taking a big minnow trap and um, leaving it in, in the water. So what we've done is set 10 traps at one location and um, we check it once a day for five days. And we're trying to see if we can find them. Um, the, minnow, the minnow trap is basically, they look like baskets and it's two baskets put together and they can either they can get in by two holes um, they it's hard to get out of the traps so far we've caught um, things like catfish crayfish and um, eels What are you doing with a net right there? So the salamanders get up into these leaf beds. One of the easiest times to find them is in the cold, cold season because the leaves fall off the trees and they get into the water. And then there's all kinds of little insects and worms and crayfish that get in the leaves and then the salamanders go in there to eat them. So try to find areas that have a bunch of leaves and then Dip into the, pull out the, oh, there's a frog. Oh, it's actually a, it's a pickerel frog. <clears throat> it's a, not, not super rare, but it's also not very common. You won't find it, you know, all over the place like a bullfrog or something. It's mm -hmm. usually gonna be right along uh, moderate sized rivers in this area. We just pulled this trap up and it's an empty. So I'm gonna take this awesome. Oh, wait, nope, we got a crawfish. So not a complete loss. And dump the nasty bait that we don't want anymore back in the river. And then I'm sure this little guy doesn't want to come with us. Dead? Oh no, not dead. Just stubborn. Let it go. Come on. Come on. See, he's more likely to let me tear his claw off than let go of that thing. But a cool trick with them is that when they hit the water, they'll let go stuff. Typically. If I wasn't holding on to him. Alright, let's try this again. Yeah. A little crawl there. It's very good eating. You'll, you'll know the second you go over your boots. But 
don't grab your boots. Gently walk your way into the door. Got it. It's a different no, no, no. Yeah, I wouldn't go farther okay, than that. You're good now. That's good. Right there. Right there. Reach your hand back. Yeah. Yeah. Good step. She would have had that nice. She's got a big crayfish in there. No, that's out from the yard. Yeah, that way you don't have to get it as close as you can. Yeah, we got eels almost every time. They're, I'm not 100% sure if that's what was stealing the bait before, but. Yeah, I'd imagine they're probably a little better getting out of the traps. But but we left. We had one. We did a test that we had. A, uh, no we, worries. We, we haven't had that happen this year, so. But you know, the place where I had the one we're looking at, the Tar River, two years ago we had it hold up the the trap. And <laughs> you know we're taking part Call of the bigger survey, there. and I know that. Uh, the guy that I talked to on the phone yesterday, they had 90 traps out, so you do 10 at a site, so that means they had 9, nine sites. And they've been doing them all week, and they got one, one water Sorry, you have to, have to get they're, not, they're not usually super common, even when you do get them. But then there are some places, you know, that they got like 5 on one day, you know, 2 of them in a single trap and stuff. That'd be pretty cool. This was a historic site. Yeah. So we're, we're, <coughs> you know, that salamander is a r relatively small range, and back in the late 70s they went out and they went to almost every road crossing over moderate sized streams in the Noose and the Tar River everywhere from their head, headwaters you know north of Durham all the way down to the coast and they did this trapping so the, the protocol that we follow that five days of, of traps you know that's what they did and no one's no you know how are you gonna ever see a water dog out in a place like this you know without making a special effort so no one knows if they're still there but this is a place that they if they had them uh, 30 years ago, and we didn't get any here. But there's, we've seen it go both, both ways. We've seen places where they found them 30 years ago. We went back there, found them again. F went to places they went to 30 years ago, and they didn't get them 30 years ago, and then they found them this time. So there's no clear consensus yet about you know what the status of the New River water dog is right now. It's just kind of a mixed bag.